This is Marcus Hollinger, and this is the 116 Live Show on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 154. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, my name is Marcus. I'm, I'm, Ace, I'm Ace Harris. My good friend Ace Harris, and this is the 116 Live on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 154. And you are tapped in on the latest and greatest faith music culture right here from the reach record studios thank you so much for joining us this evening ace how you feeling i'm great man i'm i'm feeling really good um i think we've been at this for some weeks now yeah and i think i think we're getting getting a good rhythm here so it's it's been fun man so doing good no complaints really man how about you bro yeah and i'm doing well myself i'm 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 also Mm -hmm. feeling grateful for eight weeks of this program when we started this out we definitely had a very organized <laughs> Debbie had an approach, but it does feel like we're getting in our bag and, yeah. and it's been we've had some great conversations. I really enjoyed last week with Roy Scott, yeah, learning about healthy hip hop. And it, it was really one of those conversations for our listeners. If you didn't catch last week, definitely go back and catch that that conversation with Roy Scott from Healthy Hip Hop. That was such an amazing that was such an amazing conversation. Yeah, man, it, it was uh, it was really great, and just to see like-minded brothers out here building a business, yeah, through a kingdom lens, which is something that you know, uh, a space that we sit squarely in day yeah. in and day. I mean, I, I mean, I feel like uh, <clears throat> the kingdom lens is something that we try to see through with everything, and when it comes to business, there's a l- little bit extra sensitivity and nuance you have to kind of like. Uh, lean into to make it make sense so yeah yeah so why don't we why don't we talk about that today in in explicit and graspable terms okay i I think what i hear you lay out there is there's there's kingdom business Mm -hmm. and there's doing business with the kingdom mindset dang i love i love how you set that up shout out to uh uh kenton jones you know what i'm saying yeah i mean is Canton say something well, like that? Well, he has a he has a project called he had a series called similarly to church, uh, Lecrae's Church Clothes series called Kingdom Business. So every time I, I think about that term, I think about his project. But I love how you kind of like dis, like distinguish between the two. Yeah, there's Kingdom Business and it's doing business with the Kingdom Mind, which th- people think on the surface is the same, but I feel like there is some some distinction. Maybe you can yeah tell me what you mean by that. Maybe well. There's certainly overlap, and one okay. of the, one of the things that's that's been the most beneficial for me in my Christian life yeah. is to always watch out for an either or. That's yeah, t- say more. What you like? What you mean? That when we have either ors, we're we're in danger of sacrificing wisdom. We're in danger Sorry. of getting away from the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and. Instead, we can embrace both ends. So, mm-hmm. for instance, is is God about love? Is He about truth? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's not. It's not. It's not an either or. Right. It's it's a both. It's a both and. Right. So I I would want to start there, but when we talk when we talk about kingdom business, I think about what it means to keep in mind that we're build we we are building a business. Okay. And we are doing it we we are doing it with the kingdom in mind and and we are hoping to produce things that are beneficial to the kingdom of God. At the same time, there's doing kingdom business that can operate within the local church. Okay. Outside of the platforms of music, outside of the platforms of radio outside the platforms of social media yeah that are also kingdom business and i think sometimes we there are ways that we can bring them together and there are ways that we can separate them that are ultimately not that beneficial in the long run in the long run yeah I, I i see what you mean i feel like i've seen this said before maybe you can speak to it like this is more like a critical angle. People saying like, either you're about God's business or you're about the business of God. And I think mm. it's like, 
and it's a hot take, but I do feel like we we do sit in an interesting space where it's sometimes not either or. Like, so you said kingdom business uh, or doing you know or doing business as a you know from a kingdom lens. It's like, yeah, I think the either or is. I am not a huge fan of them anyway, Marcus. I feel like it's better to enter things with like nuance and being guided by the Holy Spirit, but kind of bringing it back to like what we do. I think there has been tension that I've seen before where people have this expectation, specifically like what we do at Reach Records. Yeah. Let's just bring it home to what we do. Maybe this, maybe this is helpful for other Christians out there who have businesses of like, they're expecting the operation of the rec- Reach Records, the record label to be operating in a way in which they would say, well, you guys are, it's just kingdom business and it should be God's business in the way I'm used to that meaning. So I'm expecting it to kind of run, this is for, for lack of a better example, like a church. So I want, I want, there I, we want, go. There I, we go. I, I want, I want the people who I'm dealing with to give me, um, an impression that makes me feel like you guys are like the local church. Yeah. And I, I've seen that expectation create some tension in the way I've operated and sometimes the way we've operated. I mean, what, what kind of experiences have you had with that? Yeah, it's, I've probably been, it's funny enough and <clears throat> surprising enough, I probably naturally lean on the side of wanting to function something like or in the spirit of a church. Really? Yeah. And I, I can see that. And I can it's, see that. I like we've, had, we've had some conflict, me yeah, and you personally. On yeah, this stuff. yeah, and I think that's because I have a, I had, I came here from a ministry background. I was, in, I was in campus ministry mm. before I got here, and a lot of my time was dedicated to making disciples explicitly. Explicitly. So, okay. at that point, when I was on the campus, I would use my interest in shoes and fashion and art to go out. For the for the soul for the sole purpose of building relationships that could then advance people spiritually mm. in their in their walk with Christ. <clears throat> yeah. Bible studies, things like that. And when I when I came to reach, it was a bit of an adjustment because I brought that I brought that lens of discipleship to reach records. And I kind of started to run into some issues in my leadership. Say, say, say more. Yeah, I started to run into some issues in my leadership because I, could, I couldn't put that in context primarily when it came to hiring people. Oh, so interesting. a little bit of the way that I would look at somebody who would be a potential candidate to work at Reach was colored by how I was looking for people to disciple. Really? Mm-hmm. That's a wild... So, so, so your first, uh, like, you know, time at Reach, you had like a disciple ministry kind of lens. Oh yeah. So tell me about a time where you, I don't want to put any names out there, but you was not blinded, but you were kind of wrapped in that expectation and it was an interesting or not so great HR hiring, doing business moment. Yeah. I was at... I was at Reach probably three years before I became marketing director. Okay. Maybe even less. Okay. So I I started out, I was an individual player doing social media and hooping. So it was all about what I getting buckets, me on the court doing my thing. But then I train I very quickly transitioned into leadership when I became our marketing director and I hired someone that I had known for like ten years. Really? Someone that is just yep, and um, I like invited him down to Atlanta, like moved him into my house, like the full bit, wow. so that he could work at Reach, and that relationship. While while I I don't reg- I don't regret doing that at all, and and God definitely did a lot through, through that. that. Yeah, I think th- there were some things that I was missing in that hmm. which had a lot to do with performance really yeah like you've got a you've got a in a discipleship relationship there's one that is particularly in a ministry context yeah there our relationship there's no dynamic in our relationship that has to do with like output or performance 
or anything like that because we're not we're not in a business we're not accountable yeah. for budgets we're not accountable mm. for client relationships and things like that and so by that being the focus and the forefront of my perspective yeah i was like no i'm i'm i put him before the business in a lot of ways wow. where it was like hey the the team is suffering we're not we're not getting certain things done we're not providing a certain level of service service yeah and i would compensate i was like well i i i, I got enough talent i i got enough talent this is this is, this is I, I never knew this, this yeah is and i was like i got enough talent so whatever he's lacking in i'll cover because you are invested in him because I'm investing in him. Yeah. I'm trying to invest in him spiritually while while also I mean it wasn't like a hundred percent thing, but that I, I have to admit, that was the thing that was at the forefront of my mind. Right. And it did a lot of damage when it came time to transition transition him out. I it mm. I believe because it's like, wait, Marcus, you were operating in such a way where you're like a what are you like my pastor you're discipling me you're my, but you're now you're my pastor this, or you're my boss you're my yeah, supervisor like, you're my and, friend but now, but now you yeah. and i don't so much know that I, i'm speaking from my perspective i don't so much know what his how he was experiencing this but i do know when it came time for the work relationship to end it 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 was a very difficult moment and i think Mm. That was largely in part influenced by how I was showing up and how I was mm. leading. And it took me a few, it took me a few, it took me years to work through that to then say, okay, I have to put my role here first. I have to put my responsibility to the company and what we're actually here first. And with that being in place, then I can offer these other dynamics, then I can offer all of my spiritual formation, all of my yeah. scriptural, you know, all of that, if in that, but I got to keep the first thing first because I can always make disciples outside of my job. I got to be very careful about trying, about how I approach that Wow. in the, in the yeah, job. Yeah, I, I think, Wow, you, you, wow, I'm still, I'm still, <laughs> yeah, I'm still marinating on all that you said because yeah. you dropped so many gems. Um, you had to learn, and you had to took you a couple years to unpack and to learn through that. And I, I can see someone, I can see a critic now on the uh, Reach Records YouTube channel because I do read the comments, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> we do. At like twelve in the morning. Not, I'm just kidding. Sometimes I do, but. Saying, yo, let's keep the, we got to keep the first thing first. And I wonder, and we can probably get into this more in a little bit, where I wonder as Christians who do business or in a business that promotes Christian art or themes, whether we have an expectation for what is the first thing in that and can lose sight of the business implications of what we're building. And so our, our, our desire for ministry, our desire to be kingdom minded, to do God's business it's coming from a pure place, but I wonder if it's a little limited in the context of how we are supposed to operate and steward a business. Yeah, you know and that's where I think about, I believe it's in Luke, where Jesus is criticizing his, or, or he he's offering some teaching to his disciples, and he talks about how the sons of the world are better at using what they have to get what they want than mm -hmm. sometimes we believers are in it and the, the actual scripture is escaping me. But I think that's a, that has been a great paradigm shift. One thing that's really helped me shift my paradigm to say this, this business, this, my position, this platform, it is a tool. Yes, it is for the kingdom, for the kingdom. Yes. It is, but it's, it's a tool. It is not the. It's not. It's the, not the fulfillment, fulfillment. Yeah, of sure. it, right? Sure. It's. It's not. This is. This is not. And 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 when I rightly see that, then it's like, okay, well, you don't just show. It's not just a tool, yeah. right? Because it it is something that that can be used to with with my team, and I do try to lead out of. Yeah. I do still lead out of my background in sure. ministry with my team sure. to to further win them to Christ, to 
uh, to help them to edify to, to edify yeah, yeah, them yeah. and 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 allow that to be what comes out of yeah. the work but i've had to i've had to really really work on because there's a way that i could have been compromising the position and then you know lose the tool not that it's about maintaining the, the tool, tool at all cost but there is a stewardship aspect that's at play that I had to be mindful of, and so that that's, that's been a really that that's been a major that's, really good. that's a very, that's a key yeah. example of how Shoot. I've had to learn that and navigate that. Man, well may, maybe yeah. I mean y'all hang tight on the one one six life. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a break here and kind of unpack that some more and yeah. and try to navigate this amazing conversation, which I'm having a good time getting to learn more about you. So yeah, yeah stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break if you're just tuning in. My name is Marcus. I'm here with my good friend. Ace Harris. And this is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 154. We'll be right back after this break. We'll hear some great kingdom building music. Welcome back. My name is Marcus. If you're just tuning in, I'm here with my good friend. Ace Harris. And this is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 154. And today we're discussing doing God, doing business God's way. Mm. And if you missed our first segment, Ace, through amazing question asking, got a pretty, pretty <laughs> personal story out of me about how I had to adjust in my leadership to actually steward my position as a leader here and correct my lens around how discipleship goes into hiring and managing people. And Ace, I wanted to kind of flip it over to you. Yeah. We 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 talked about in our first segment this concept of uh doing kingdom business and then doing business with a kingdom mindset, right? I would love to hear a story of how you how to nav had to navigate mm. that tension. Mm, there's so many that come to mind. I, I can probably speak to a couple and thanks for asking. Cause it's like, there's a couple ways for me to answer that question. There's one, which is kind of a, a bridge back to the sacred secular divide, but because I produce music, I'm always wrapped in that question and that conversation. Shout out to Jackie Hill Perry and her thoughts oh, on Beyonce man. and all that. So I think there's a lot of, yeah. so I, I'll probably start there and I also give a more like yeah. business. So, um, Obviously, you know, people who know me, follow me, know that I work uh, as a producer. I produce with not just Christian artists. I, I try to use a filter and it's not a case. It's more of a case by case situation. Well, but I, in the past, I have produced for artists who people may, you know, have issues with in terms of the kind of content they've put out. But say that to say, I mean, I'm, in a, I'm, I'm still walking in that area and growing and learning. And I mean, I've been immersed in Christian hip hop for the past six years and having a great time developing my sound there. But specifically, I remember Tory Lanez in 2020 had uh, an issue, came out, the alleged, now found guilty uh, yeah, issue, shooting. Yeah. shooting of Megan Thee Stallion. Yeah. And I, when that happened, I was like very adamant and like very like, to, especially to my music industry peers who are not in the Christian space, a lot of the men around me and in spaces, I remember being on Clubhouse at the time, this is so 2020, and it was like a like a like an hour long conversation about the men. Do I know personally who are like defending Tory Lanez? And I was like, why am I the only one saying, "Yo, no, this is wrong"? Yeah, I think he shot her, and we need to like hold him accountable. Yeah, and so that played through my mind. I, I was so passionate at the moment. I made a post about it. I'm not saying I should have made a post, but I, I I think me making the post was from a place of trying to like. Yeah, what did you say in the post? Something like, um, men need to do better in the industry. We need to respect black women and hold him account hold black men accountable when they are out of pocket. Mm. And, and and I think what I said is fine. I just wonder if my getting into that conversation was even naturally or sincerely something I even want to get into publicly. Yeah. Publicly. Why? Um, I mean, I don't. I am generally not like a social media activist. Okay. I, I'm more of a private coach and mentor discipler okay naturally I, i'm more like i i'll meet with people and we'll walk through life and I, i'm that's how i naturally am uh -huh. so my public 
platform isn't used to like act activate um, or stay take sides or make strong claims because I think social media is a strong is a uncomfortable form for me to be an activist on. Some people use it well, but I, I feel like it's just a cesspool of like yeah. either or a yeah. lot of times. Yeah. So yeah. it's hard for me yeah. to see me using that tool to make those kind of claims. Yeah. So it was kind of naturally out of pocket for me. Yeah. So I made that claim. And I, at the time, I was producing for like coffee, Afro B, you know, people, the music wasn't like super like, the, you, know, you know, it was pretty like wholesome in nature, but it wasn't like Christian music. And uh, I remember, I think like a month after that, I was working with this Afrobeat artist and he actually took on Tory Lanez as a client. Oh. And he had texted me directly because he loved my work on some other stuff. Yeah. And was like, yo, Tory's working on an Afrobeat project. And I have, mind you, now, I have producers that are signed to me mm-hmm. that, I, that I manage that do Afrobeat. And he's like, can you send me a pack of Afrobeat tracks? And I had just made that post or blasting Uh-oh. him. Yeah. And I'm like, the business capitalist mind of me was like well you know i mean you know it's yeah <laughs> send some tracks over you know i mean yeah i, I said what i said but hey i mean you know, yeah he's got a budget <laughs> yeah 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 and i asked my wife and she was kind of like just kind of politely saying like well that's kind of like hypocritical yeah okay i, I called my boy Sock shout, out Naja. shout out Naja, babe i love you you're amazing um my boy Sock passe and he was like no nah, you got to kind of stand on what you stood on oh you gotta you can't you can't be out here trying to get placements or even not even me it was i have producers that are assigned to me yeah who i was gonna like send their it wouldn't even necessarily be my production but it could benefit my producers yeah and i i i didn't send that pack because mm. i felt like to do business the kingdom mindset in me in that moment said why would i want to do business with someone that i feel like is being a toxic yeah, and, and sure, that's a black and white area. I know that people can hear that and hear other things that I've done, but in this moment, I yeah. was passionate about calling him out. Yeah. So maybe I need to be as passionate about not working with him in a business, commercial. Um, and and I want to ask, what do you what what is the what I hear is with a kingdom mind, you made a costly business decision. So I'd love yeah. to hear what was I, I, you use the word oh that would be hypocritical right uh, Sagpase mentioned that man you got to stand on what you stood on right those those phrases are you know if we talk in a what's what's understood ain't got to be explained type of mm-hmm, way then mm-hmm. it's like okay I Barbara got you shop talk let's go yeah but could you make it a little more clear what was that what do you feel was at stake. So why not be hypocritical? Why why stand why not why stand on what you stood okay, on? What so, difference does okay, it make? Okay, I, I'll break it. As someone who's a Christian doing business, our business needs to be filtered through our faith. Mm-hmm. And there are moments where it's not easy to always do that. But I felt like in that moment, principle needed to be placed over capital, mm. like principle. Over profits. Yeah. And it's not easy to, to make that decision. What, what, and what was the principle? The principle was this person is, in my opinion, being, uh, you know, he's abusing women. Yeah. Why would I want to put music in? Why would I want to profit off him as a producer? Yeah. Because that ben- it benefits me. But does that benefit the, the especially specifically the black culture, hip hop culture? How does that benefit? How does that contribute? To culture in a way that's productive, constructive. Mm, yeah, and so yeah, and I do. I know people can hear the nuance and be like, "Whoa, well, you send beat to someone else who has it." Like, yeah, I, I hear you. We can have that conversation another day. But yeah. specifically, I'm criticizing him for his for his uh, behavior, but then I also want to participate. Yeah, and profit share off his platform. Yeah, I don't know. If I, my heart was like that's that. I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So it it was a lot, and it, you know, and sometimes you just have to think about it, um, and just you know, you, you take seemingly an L, but I, I I I have found peace to stand on what's right over what is the right business move at times. Yeah. Because it's just I feel like our conscience is something to be held and to and to to steward and God. If you're really trusting God to be your provider, 
Yeah. To be your provision, to be your, you know, principal means of of, of living and income, then you're going to have to say no to some things that's going to cost you some money, but it's not going to cost you your peace. You know yeah. What I'm so. Yeah. I love that. And I love, thank you for sharing that yeah. too. It's these it's these are moments right like yeah. you said um and 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 what i'm finding in this is faithfulness in the moment ends up being what matters over time because yeah. we can look back we can look back we can all look back and say man i made the right decision in that moment and maybe in the past i didn't maybe in the past i made a different decision but at the end of the day it's about the moment Right? right, like it's a faithfulness is about moment to moment. Yeah, because we don't, we don't. So I wanted to shout you out on that, and I also wanted to make a call out to what you to to what you mentioned, Jackie, and her Beyonce video. And man, I just want to shout Jackie out. Shout out, uh, Jackie. We love you. We are thankful for you. And I want to shout out a specific thing that I hope that we can do for our listeners, which is she laid out her experience her conviction and she promoted wisdom absolutely which is i'm not going to tell you what to do i'm not going to tell you how to think i'm going to give you something to think about but more so i want to help you gain some tools to think right for sure because wisdom is not a, it's not a it's it's it, it doesn't treat the faith like a book of answer. It doesn't treat the, you know, it doesn't treat the Bible like a book of answers. It treats it as if it's something that over time will shape you and will grow you yeah. in your capacity to make decisions yeah. as the spirit leads you. And I hope that's what we can do with conversations like this one. Where folks can say, Man, okay, I hear I hear the conclusion that Ace arrived to, but but I can t- but I can hear how he thought through that. Yeah. I can hear what he was leaning on as he processed that. And the same thing for the same thing for me, because yeah. you may find yourself in an ambiguous situation. Yeah, for and sure. And you can't you can't rely on Ace's answer for your situation. These are That's the, true. a lot of these things are ambiguous. You can't rely on Marcus's yeah. decision. But hopefully what you can hear is the God behind Right. All of this. And I, and I think a lot of times people, even on this chat and, and, and like even in even in like the, the people that, you know, have questions for us at times. People want they want the law a lot of times. Yeah. Give me the rules. Give me the give me the give me the devices. Give me the guardrails. Show me. Tell me what to do. And it's like when I look at like interfacing in a business, you know, sense being kingdom minded. Looking at how God speaks to his people in the Bible, a lot of times God's more like, it's like he's inviting you to lean into his wisdom and his word, but it's not always where it's like, here's a blueprint on X, Y, and Z. Go do these things. Yeah. He's inviting you to lean into the word and apply and let that soak in your spirit. And that, and through that, your 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 filter becomes to be more clear. Yeah. And so you have more of a um insight on how to make certain decisions. Yeah. But not every decision is gonna be. You could go to the Bible, find an issue, and see. Oh, go to the appendix and find. Yo, and it says in this section yeah. here, right here. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not a physical contract. Yeah, it's it's a covenantal experience. Yeah, and so you're not gonna like. Oh yeah, it's chapter two right here says this, this, this. So you do that. And it's yeah, like, I, I think we are we want to have the black and white either or application when it's really a spiritual. Insight yeah. that can't be framed in a human box. You yeah, know what I'm so, absolutely. Um, absolutely. And that's 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 what we want to give to you all who are listening to this. So, Ace, again, thank you for sharing that story and for giving your insight on that. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. And if you're just tuning in, we want to thank you for, for joining us. My name is Marcus. I'm one of your hosts. I'm with my buddy. Ace Harris. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 154. We're going to take a quick break, hit you with some of this kingdom building music, and we'll be right back. Yeah. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, 
My name is Marcus, and I'm here with my good friend. Ace Harris. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM Channel 154. And today, Ace and I are, I, I, you know, I'm just here with my brother. Yeah, we're we chilling. And we're, we're walking our way through this concept of doing business God's way. Swapping and sharing stories of times where we've had to make decisions under ambiguous circumstances that hold together the notion that we are in business and we are trying to do business with a kingdom lens and coming up against the reality that this is not a ministry. This is not a mm, church. People get offended. Can you s- I feel like when you say that, I can just see people flaring up at that comment. Well, well, what do you mean by this is not a ministry? Sorry to put you on the spot. This is help, not. Help our listeners understand what you. Yeah, mean that's that. a that's a pretty pregnant statement. So when I say that this is not a ministry, it is a ministry. I I, I could run. I could run. I could run the risk of contradicting myself. Okay. Right, because it's it's not just a ministry that's a better okay i like that right it's not just a ministry right. it's also a business and it's and it's a it's a business mm-hmm. that has to do that that produces products that minister that platforms people who minister and yeah much like when and and, and, and i think probably the most specific way in saying it is it's not a church there's no pastor here sure Right. There's no person who's who's holding the office of pastor who's shepherding people through, you know, that's that that is to be done in a different context. This is not that context. Now, there are people here who have spiritual gifts and who are offering them and who are walking in them right. gifts of teaching that their preaching does happen from time to time. Oh, it, I mean. More than more that more than from time to time. Yeah. Oh no, it happens very consistently and very <laughs> frequently. Uh, and at the same time, the, the, these are contractual relationships that we have. They're not covenant ooh. relationships. So, what would you say to somebody who is like, "Yo, Marcus, you know, reach records. You guys used to be in the in the early beginnings, kind of calling back to our original." Um, taping with uh, Lecrae and Ben, you guys were very ministry and mission minded. Mm-hmm. Now you guys are just business. How could you, why, like, how do you make sense of what it is and either the shift or the evolution of that? You know yeah, what I'm I think, I think I would probably just explain it in very practical terms. Okay. I was having this conversation with someone the other day and, and I was like, listen, my, even myself, I am one, I'm on two teams at reach technically three i'm on the executive team i'm one of six i'm on i lead the marketing team and that was six people three marketing and three creative some of them creative team the marketing team on the executive team and we serve mm-hmm. eight artists nine, nine. Okay. we serve nine artists yeah right there you should get a picture of the capacity Ooh, okay. Right. Okay. So okay. what what capacity? So there's there's people who need leadership, there's teammates who need camaraderie, there are artists who need not just encouragement or prayer or things yeah. like that. They actually need our business acumen. Yes. In order to to serve them. To serve them. I mean, and just and and specifically to serve their kingdom building agendas. Yes. So right then and there. And and I would say that wasn't on some level that was always the case because I I came here in 2014. So there's a lot that I can't speak to. Okay. Yeah. Right. I love that. You Marcus, I ain't going back to them. Yeah, I can't. I can't. Unfortunately, I ain't going back to real talk. I'm starting right here. Yeah. If it if it happened, if if you want to ask me about 2007. Go watch the Ben and Lecrae episode. Yeah, do that. <laughs> you want to buy my old album? Because I can't, I can't speak to that. But even since 2014, I've watched this business go through a number of cycles every year, and the used to be's are 
I, I would say no one's wrong and and how they would say you know like again i told you i started out and i was very much a discipler and someone would say well marcus you don't put as much emphasis you don't show up the same way to disciple your team and it's like yeah because i learned because i grew because i had to adapt in order to steward right. this the 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 we wouldn't be here if I didn't do that. We wouldn't even even if whether it's a question or a criticism, you wouldn't be able to levy that question or criticism if I didn't change. Ooh, you would have you would have died if you would have made remained. I'm, I'm quoting Jay Z all this episode. <laughs> well, shout out to, shout out to everybody. Um, I mean, I, I saw there's a lot there. So you're, you're you're saying change was inevitable, like yeah, it always for is. for what purpose to what end? Yeah, well stewardship and i think there's a difference between i want to be very specific to call this out there's a difference between change and compromise so we don't want to we 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 don't want to compromise we never want to compromise and compromising has a lot to do with denying the faith it has a lot to do with being hypocritical saying one thing and then yeah professing one thing and actively doing another right we don't want to do that yeah that's whack but there is a kind there is a, an aspect where it comes down to the reality that hey instead of being able to be a church maybe we should have good relationships with churches so when people who show up here need a church home we can say man you should which, go which we've actually done which we've actually done which which like tangibly I, i've seen that and certain staff, people, yeah. and artists connecting dots, building, using tools to build and point yeah. people to the kingdom. I mean, we've had we've had issues where we've had to collaborate with pastors to help care for. I, I've done it. I've I've collaborated with pastors to care for staff members here at Reach. That's fair. And that's kingdom, dog. I, I, and I, I think like people uh, are looking for. They want to apply because I, I, I've had this rub a little bit in the business setting, too, where people because Reach Records is an unashamed Christian hip hop label. We make art that embodies the Christian faith. We platform artists who are Christian and they make art from or for the church. And people have this expectation that the church way of doing business is applicable to how we move and it's just like wait and i'll be like bro man we're more like chick-fil-a like <laughs> like we got bottom lines we got p and l's and i try to filter my my like you know biblical lens through how i do business and but i sometimes people get a little goofy trying to like <laughs> what do you mean by that they, they, well they, they try to trade the spiritual they try to exchange the spiritual need for business proximity like, oh, Ace, you know, oh, yeah, come do this thing, you know, it's, it's ministry. And, and it's like, yo, can, but can, can we get you to do this thing for this ministry purpose? Oh, uh, no, nah, I can't do that. Well, Reach ain't, y'all not about ministry. Y'all yeah. not about and kingdom. I, <laughs> and I want to say that because it just so happens that you and I are members of the same church. So I have a, I, I actually have a covenantal responsibility <laughs> to a group of people. Yeah. So when when I'm here and I'm and I'm doing my work or whatever, just, just like you or just like anyone else, it's like, well, well, y'all ain't about this or that because you didn't come fulfill this ministry thing over here. And it's like I, I, I have a church home that I do that I that I that gets that, that gets my ministry because I'm a member there. Sure. Right. And that's a that's a uh uh and we have to be and we have to make sure that we have some left in the tank to give yeah. there and I, and I feel like and we have to be mindful and we also and i also try to be sensitive to people who have even people who have reached out to me for things for the artist in the name of ministry but underneath it was business yeah and i've had to like using my look look i had to be very clear and draw lines which is i think People who work in business and are Christians have to go through this all the time of like, just because we are of the same faith, we, we, we serve the same God, but we ain't got the same bottom line. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have, diff- we have to navigate that in a way that's... So I, I, I've had to like gently be like, um, I can't connect you. Or, or I have connected and had to be like, hey, uh, you know, that wasn't what... That didn't serve our business interests and we, we, we you know, support what you're doing, but 
Um, we have we have goals, expectations. Like Ben and Lecrae do not employ Marcus and Ace because we love the Lord exclusively. It's part of it. It's part of it. it has a lot to, not do, to do with it. it. But loving the like, <laughs> if we're not producing results as a business, this podcast is gonna be you gonna see some yeah, other it, don't, it doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It doesn't so, exist. So I said, but, but like I think so. I think being kingdom minded in business, you have to steward the business. Yeah, yeah. yeah you've got you have to steward because doing good business allows people to provide for the families, to invest in platforms. That the kingdom work is supported, financed through a lot of times through good business stewardship and i want to i want to say this because there's a way that these things can can come across and i specifically want to call out the role of discernment okay and again i gotta give it i gotta give a shout out to jackie o'perry on this one and there is this aspect of doing kingdom business that does happen it doesn't it doesn't show up on the balance sheet Right. Facts. It doesn't show up oh, yeah. in the PL. It doesn't show up in the email, but it shows up in the prayer closet. Just this morning, man, um, I had a friend last night was telling me about how there's churches all over the globe and, and in the um, and in the states that are fasting together right now. And uh, he was kind of breaking it down for me. And I, I woke up this morning with no alarm. And man, I was moved to go and pray, huh. and I'm so thankful for for that time that I had this morning. And when I'm when I'm down there and I'm praying, I'm praying for wisdom. Mm. I'm praying, I'm praying, and I'm asking God, Lord, what should we talk about? I'm praying, I'm asking, Lord, we got this project coming up and I need wisdom. Your mm. word says mm. the fear of the Lord is the beginning mm. of wisdom. Yeah. Your word says if anyone is lacking in wisdom, let him ask mm. in faith, believing. Mm. That's good. So bro. here I am, Lord. That don't show up on yeah. that don't show up on the on the uh, on the uh, P and L. Or it doesn't show up on the on the uh, content reel doesn't show up you know and so and those are uh, so so i think there's a balance and, and i'll bring up discernment because that's where that discernment is sharpened yeah it's not it's not in the building it, it is but it's not just in yeah, the building absolutely. it's not just in the saying yes or no to this it's before all of that Bro. and it's by being a person who is submitted Mm. And uncompromising in the walk to stay connected to the Lord and and not depending on the Stanford Association, not mm. depending Come on, on the Come on, on the, the 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 Tory Lane. Not depending on these fly kicks connection, not depending on the fly kicks, but depending on this all knowing, all powerful God who before the creation of the universe mm-hmm. created us for great works to walk in and has given us everything according to life mm. and godliness right right yeah. so that's another that's, that's another ass that's a that's a very i'll be remiss to not bring that up in this conversation i, I think i think that's wonderful and i i, I don't even have nothing <laughs> else to say or add but just like thank you for yeah it starts with that, so it starts with Christ, yeah. fellowship and community. Yeah, we can't even do this business apart outside of Him. Yeah. So, like I said, like I said, it doesn't show up. It doesn't show up in like the what well, some people do use their platform to sometimes over maybe over ministry. They be doing the most of their ministry TikTok and reels. But hey, look, it's hey, that's a you know. But do do that. You know what I'm saying. But I'm saying sometimes people don't see what's really going on. It's informing a lot of these business decisions and navigation and nuance. Yeah. And it, it's, and it starts there. And, you know, so I just want to encourage y'all, man, like, you know, do good business with the kingdom lens, filter your business through the faith and engage nuance, wisdom, discernment. And make sure you're actually doing business with God privately. Yes. In prayer. <laughs> Don't be, yeah, don't be out here talking about just to do some ministry together. You ain't, you ain't really in your word or your yeah, community. Yeah, we can't do kingdom business if we ain't doing business with the business, man. Hey.
the businessman god that's what i'm talking about yeah. so hey so that's a great place to land today's conversation thank yeah. you for showing up with your story man and for giving me a chance to reflect on mine if you're catching us at the tail end my name is marcus i'm here with my good friend ace harris this is the 116 life where we cover the latest and greatest on faith music and culture it's holy culture radio sirius xm channel 154 we'll see y'all next week